So this is the second of the pair of lectures on E. coli, and this time uh, we're looking at E. coli that live inside cells or live outside the gut. And again, just to orientate ourselves, second of these two lectures, we'll be talking about some aspects of protein secretion in this lecture which will be reinforced later on in the course when we go through these other lectures on protein secretion. So if I go over things rather quickly or you feel a bit confused about type 3 secretion and stuff like that, don't worry, we will be getting uh, more on that later in the course. So to pick up where we left off, last time round we went through a number of E. coli Pathotypes that cause diarrhea, listed here. Today we're going to look at uh, what is effectively one more pathotype, uh, the enteroinvasive E. coli and Shigella, and then look at what happens when E. coli gets outside of the gut, so called expec, and causes disease there. Now, Shigella is a, a bit of a tricky problem because we retain this uh, Linnaean binomial system for describing Shigella. We have these four species that are recognised the, by the taxonomists, Shigella flexneri, sonii, boidii, dysenterii. But in fact, now uh, people have studied sequencing genomes and looking in more detail we realise, actually, that Shigella is buried within E. coli. So it doesn't, doesn't deserve to have its own genus. It doesn't even deserve to have a separate species designation. But the taxonomists uh, have not yet resolved this. Uh, and we still kind of go on in a rather conservative way and, and use these species names, um, particularly as they have been used for a long time in clinical laboratories. Uh, these are an unusual kind of E. coli, though, because they have no flagella, uh, and they have no flagella antigens, so they have no H antigens, and they're non-motile as well. They also uh, have a very narrow distribution. Effectively, they are confined to humans. There's no large animal reservoir out there, there's environmental reservoirs out there. It's one from one human to another um, through the faecal oral route. So, as I say, modern phylogenetics genomics shows us that all the shigellas really belong within the species E. coli. It's a bit, you can imagine the E. coli is a bit of a TARDIS there. It's kind of larger on the inside. It's got enough space to incorporate the whole of shigella, all four species. Um, it's a funny effect on the screen there, aren't we? Can live with that, I suppose. Um, Enterinvasive E. coli is the name given to some strains of E. coli that behave like Shigella, but unlike Shigella, they are lactose fermenters. So that normally E. coli is a lactose fermenter, but... Um, in Shigella, we tend not to see lactose fermentation. Well, at least we have two different phenotypes. Some of the Shigellas don't ferment lactose at all because they've lost the genes in the lac operon. It's been deleted from them. In others, we have one of the genes lost, uh, a permease, but there is still the gene there which actually um, breaks down lactose. And so um, what you get is you get very s slow... Um, import of, 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 of lactose into the cell, and so these are called late lactose fermenters. If you leave them long enough, you will, if you put them on an indicator plate, they will start to ferment lactose eventually, but it's a slow process. Now, the key point is that both Shigellas and enterinvasive E. coli actively invade colonic cells, they adopt an intracellular lifestyle, and they can actually spread from one cell within the, the lining of the gut to an adjacent cell. So they have this very particular lifestyle which uh, defines them as a group. 
just again to reinforce some of the problems of taxonomy and what we know about phylogeny, traditional taxonomy puts them up there as, as a separate genus. But in fact, we now recognize if we look at uh, chromosomal markers, we can um, see the, shall I 